Kursk, an update. Russia is actually fighting NATO right now. President Zelensky press conference in and out. Good afternoon, my name is Henry Keane and we are UAT of English, working hard every day to bring the hard truth in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. The armed forces of Ukraine are advancing in the Kursk region and have taken control of 100 settlements in the region. Currently, 1,294 square kilometers of territory are under Ukrainian control. During the operation on the territory of Russia, 594 servicemen of the armed forces of the Russian Federation surrendered. All this was stated by the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky. Selsky noted that the Kremlin has redeployed about 30,000 military reserves to the Kursk region and from other directions, also known that Russia is not transferring troops from the Pokrovsk direction to Kursk, but on the contrary is increasing its military formation in Pokrovsky. Earlier, Volodymyr Zelensky said in an interview with Indian journalists that the Kursk operation is part of a large military diplomatic, as he said, operation, and everything that Ukraine does is done only to force Russia to just peace. He added what is obvious, it was very difficult for Ukraine to fight off Russia without the help of partners, but we did that for a long time. I quote, and it was very difficult for us to seize the initiative and we needed to do that. And this is one of the stages of the plan. And you saw it, it worked, said the president. Also, when asked about what the road to peace might be, Zelensky remarked, I think that our approach, if we talk about our steps, both on the battlefield and in a diplomatic direction, our approach is closer to peace than any other proposals. Well, we also saw and heard a lot of peace proposals from many other countries. All of them, each and every, is nothing but politics to me. These are not about just peace, but a shortcut to easing the lives of those proposing. Like, Ukraine gives up on land and people that died for it, and the war stops and everyone is happy. Well, not everyone. Ukraine is not. Such formulas are simply unacceptable. Zelensky also noted that, as dictator, Putin is not afraid of any political intimidation. Obviously, he responds to such diplomacy with yet another brutal attack on Ukraine, for example, and murders more Ukrainians. Only diplomacy doesn't work here. Yeah? We all need to see concrete steps and that it would not be at the expense of, like, 30% of Ukrainians' homelands, not at the expense of our people. If there is such a plan, we are only pro it, Zelensky said. He also noted that Putin wants the influence that the Soviet Union once had, but he won't be able to do it. I quote, he won't have time. He won't be given years or life for that. The Ukrainian army is entering his turf in small numbers and he can't do anything about it for 20 days. End of quote. Well, what can I add here? What if we march on to directly to Moscow and then send a message to Putin in a telegram messenger? Hey, we're here. Where are you? And send him a tap, a live location. <music> Russia planned to sabotage a NATO airbase in Geilenkirch, in Germany, using drones, Deutsche Presse Agentur reports, citing German intelligence. According to journalists, this was indicated by foreign intelligence services. On the base, there were 14 Boeing E3 AOX aircraft based at the Geilenkirchen Air Base, equipped with long-range radars and sensors capable of detecting air and surface targets at a very long distance. Such an aircraft covers a civilian's zone of more than 300,000 square kilometers. At the beginning of the year, thanks to our Valor Armed Forces, the Russian Armed Forces lost two similar Russian-made reconnaissance aircraft, the A-50s, the Russian drone was first spotted in northern Germany on the night of August 8th. After that, several more UAVs appeared in the country's airspace. Flights were also recorded over an industrial park, a decommissioned nuclear power plant and a new liquid natural gas terminal. These could have been Orland 10 military drones specifically designed to evade detection systems, the German police suggests. They moved only at night at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour, maneuvered, turned on and off the backlights and also frequently changed altitude. German security agencies are investigating where these drones could have been launched from, probably from Russian ships in the North and Baltic Seas or from Kaliningrad. 
The prosecutor's office of the German city of Flensburg has launched an investigation into the flight of Russian drones over a shutdown nuclear power plant, as Bild publication reports in Russian Telegram Messenger. The incident occurred in August. In an industrial area, drones flew at a high speed over an area where, in addition to the shutdown nuclear power plant, there is an LNG terminal and chemical plants there just as well. According to well-informed sources of Bild publication, the police in the region were put on alert. They reported that the no-fly zone was violated several times. Presumably, this zone was crossed by a military drone. Well, recent events in Europe clearly confirm the increased activity of Russian agents. Thus, in April in Great Britain, two men were charged with setting fire to a warehouse containing weapons ready to be sent to Ukraine. In Sweden, railway sabotage committed by a foreign state is being investigated now. In Czech Republic, Russia tried to disable a railway signaling system. In Germany, a Russian citizen and a German citizen were arrested this spring for preparing the arson. The two were getting ready also to set fire to a warehouse containing cargo for Ukraine, of course. And in Estonia, Russia was caught for acts of vandalism against the cars of politicians and journalists. Well, you better get yourself ready and fast. From Russia without love, more to come for sure. And one of the most important topics in Ukrainian media space today was Volodymyr Zelensky's press conference. Of course, it lasted for one and a half hours and the president of Ukraine answered many questions of both Ukrainian and foreign journalists. But I won't tell you what the most important thing Zelensky said because I have someone to do that for me. Ihor Popov, expert at the United Ukraine think tank. Greetings, Pani Popov. So, I think we have a sort of a technical problem. Do you hear me or not really? Yes, I hear you very clear. Okay, you hear me. Right, so, um, the first question. If you would have had a chance, what would you ask President Zelensky yourself? I think I, will, uh, I would ask the same question as I uh, was asked about uh, peace and about peace plan. Right. As for me, this is maybe one of the key messages uh, uh, that uh, Mr. President announced uh, the detailed peace plan will be ready next uh, month in September, and Ukraine will share this plan with our Western allies, uh, first of all with our American colleagues. And uh, then uh, this plan will be submitted and uh, discussed on the second uh, peace summit. Uh, so maybe this question, uh, which is important not only for me, but for the majority of Ukrainian citizens, as well as from international society. I agree with you. I would ask the same question. But mainly foreign policy still was discussed at the press conference, and almost none of domestic issues. And there are a lot of them, as we know. Why do you think is that? Maybe it reflects uh, public opinion polls, and when I uh, read such polls, I see that uh, questions about security, uh, about future of war, are uh, dominant uh, now in Ukrainian society. We understand that if we will get a stable and a fair peace, uh, in this case, we could develop our political institutions, we could develop our economies, but... Uh, Without stable peace, we cannot do anything in any other sphere. That's why it's the first question from Ukrainians, and that's why maybe it was the main topic uh, in today's press conference. Absolutely fair enough, fair enough. But which topic Zelensky himself should have focused on more, you think? Which journalist could have missed, probably? I don't think they missed something. Uh, concerning the international mm -hmm. security, for sure, there were questions about uh, Kursk operations. Right. Uh, because uh, first days, Ukrainian political leadership did comment it, and it's uh, maybe naturally because it was military operation, and usually military command uh, keeps such operations in secret about uh, further details and uh, plans. Uh, but today, President Zelensky very clearly told that we don't need additional territories, we don't need to occupy part of Russia. So the main goal for Kursk operation uh, was to avoid a Russian offensive from this territory. And uh, 
by conducting Kursk operation, uh, Ukraine kept peace in our uh, Sumy and uh, Chernihiv oblast. Uh, That's why we, uh, it was only one option for us uh, to stop Russian offensive to organize such operation. If you ask me, if anyone would ask me a question, I would say that Kursk is a means of peace to force Putin to just and long-lasting peace for Ukraine. Am I right? Do you consider it effective mean? Yes, uh, by this by uh, conducting operation in Kursk, right. Ukraine just remind first of all to Kremlin, but also to the whole world that Ukraine is interested in, in peace, uh, but uh, in stable uh, and uh, stable and fair peace. So that's why President again uh, repeated his sentence uh, that he repeated before in several uh, interviews that Ukraine will never recognize any occupation of our territory. An annexation of our territory. And, uh, for sure, we understand that now it's uh, difficult to <laughs> to um, get back all our territories occupied by Russians. But uh, when uh, Russia asks it to uh, legally reg reg legally recognize these facts of one legal referendum, uh, no Ukraine, neither any other countries uh, will agree with this. Nobody will agree with such rude violation uh, of uh, United Nations principles and UN statute. Uh, so this, ter this uh, territories could be uh, called as occupied, but not annexed. Well, you know, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, Russia probably violated all the international laws that are there, just all of them. So Russians, but what, there's one question that interests me personally. I've never seen Russians on Russian land, fighting back Ukrainian army, actually. Nor civilians, not really military. Why? Uh, for sure, the uh, Russian uh, army uh, organized some defense operations. Some. Uh, in course, but uh, it was a surprise for them, to be right. honest, and they were not <laughs> ready. Uh, concerning the um, uh, civil population, yes. that it's a very interesting difference comparing this uh, behavior of Ukrainians uh, two years ago. Uh, Ukraine uh, civilians participated in defending our land, uh, but uh, Russian civilians just complain, uh, where is our army? And this may be a very uh, important difference between our societies. Ukrainian society uh, is democratic and horizontal. And, uh, uh, in many issues like democracy or uh, relation with government, um, we are flat. But a Russian society is very subordinate. And Russian society is totalitarian, and that's why they're not active. They, they're sure that somebody from Moscow, from Kremlin, should protect them, should organize everything, and should be responsible for everything. And Ukrainians understand that uh, all of us are responsible for our future. So uh, Operation Kursk uh, again showed this difference. Just maybe Zelensky um, said that we successfully tested our own Ukrainian ballistic missile recently, meaning that means 450, roughly 500 kilometers reach of Moscow. Could that be a means of peace enforcement? Because, you know, we're talking about, like, Kursk is a means of peace enforcement, like law enforcement, but just peace enforcement for the Kremlin. So maybe this is also the means of uh, peace enforcement. New ballistic missile from Ukraine. Yes, definitely. And not only peace enforcement, but also it's our security guarantees. Sure. Because when we are talking about any peace talks and peace agreements, uh, who will guarantee this? We have, uh, unfortunately, negative experience with Budapest Memorandum, uh, because countries who signed it didn't guarantee our territorial integrity. Uh, That's why in every negotiations, in every peace summit, we are discussing peace guarantees. And strong Ukrainian army with modern weapon uh, is our best guarantee. And that's why uh, President Zelensky asked our uh, Western allies uh, to give us opportunity uh, to target 
a Russian uh, military bases in Russian territory with Western weapons. But at the same time, we develop our uh, own uh, defense industry. And uh, this announcement is on one of the news that Ukraine develop our own weapon, which, which could reach uh, any objects uh, far away in Russian territory. But we don't need it to do it immediately. It will be uh, our peace enforcement, and it will be our security guarantees uh, for the future. Agree also. I mean, uh, the ballistic missile could be the, the, the best argument in terms of forcing the Kremlin to peace. So thank you so very much for this interview and for your time. I hope we talk to you soon. Yehoi Popov was with us, expert at the United Ukraine Think Tank. That is it for this episode. It was me, Henry Keane, and our team at UATV English, hopefully to bring some hard truth, really, in easy terms for you out there. Please like, share, and comment. Your voice matters as it in turn helps Ukrainian voice to be shared worldwide. More to come already tomorrow, so please stay safe and tuned for UATV English. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. <music>